Hello, welcome to your golf channel. I'm your resident PJ coach, Jed Walters. Today's video is a video I didn't think I'd be able to bring you. Uh, a couple of months ago, I had a crashed hard drive on my laptop and I thought I'd lost all the footage of the second half of my first lesson video. Uh, and then a couple of days ago, I found the SIM card and when I plugged the SIM card into the computer, the footage was still on the SIM card. So, uh, Brilliant news is I can now bring you the second part of my first lesson. For anyone who hasn't seen the first one, I'll put a little link in the top there for you to just click on there. Watch the first one. If you've seen the first one, sit back with a brew and enjoy. Here it comes. Part two, my first lesson. So that's your pre-shot there. So previously you would have obviously a lot of load in the wrist. Yeah. Right arm will be starting to lift off the torso. I don't mind that a little bit. In the real world, that yeah. looks a little bit, that's fine. Um, but you're getting some sort of reference now as to how to control the length of your backswing. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a case of we're going to take it back, we're going to load things, we're going to load them a certain amount. Um, we were talking before about like grip and, and different mm -hmm. things and how things were balanced. You know, if we, if we talk about hinging the wrists, so that they create a 90 degree angle between the lead arm and the shaft at the top of the back swing. Okay, now, if you were more of a palm player with a bold lead wrist, you'd expect to see a little bit less wrist hinge. If you were someone who had it in the fingers and had, let's say, a very cut lead wrist, you'd see more of a hinge. Now, our preference and sort of model to start with would be relatively flat lead wrist, 90 degree angle between the shaft and the lead arm. So the model's there just for conversation start, really, it's mapped out, right, yeah, we've got too much of this. We need to reduce it. We're going to reduce it to, well, ideally 90 degrees. That's going to feel like that for you at the top. But in reality, we're loading things a little bit better now, aren't we? So you've got that feel of zero loading of the wrist to that point. Yeah? yeah. Right arm's loading to 90 degrees without lifting off the torso. And when it comes to actually hitting this shot, We get sort of blend between the two, don't we? Yeah. So we're starting to see some sort of resemblance and some sort of pattern. We're moving in the right direction. The trick for you now is to get rid of that last little bit, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Continuously yeah. getting rid of that um, and feeling how to get rid of that. Okay. So that's the other thing. It's like it's okay to get rid of it, but how do I feel like I'm going to get rid of that? Um, one really good exercise for that, and I'm not, you can do this in your own time, is to set yourself up so that your lead leg's just away from the wall, or your lead foot is just away from the wall, and then swing back so that the club doesn't make contact with it. So if you, if you load this too much and hinge your wrist too much, you're going to whack the wall when you feel like you're about chest high. It's going to be a big bang and you're going to get the shock of your life. So just again, it's just disciplining that loading of this, no lifting. Not no excessive hinging. There is some hinging, but we don't want it to be excessive. Okay? Okay, so same again, take that last little bit of loading out. Very good. Loaded that to parallel. And if you think it, it, the only time the shaft really should be parallel is when you're hitting your driver, because you're loading it's a longer yeah. shaft, bigger lever, yeah. So the six iron or seven iron should always be just short parallel. Really good.
いらっしゃる。The beautiful spot. Free shot. <laughs> Great. Really good that. Yeah. Really strong position. So just that last little bit the Yeah? Yeah. However, it's far removed from where you were at the start. Okay? So if you consider where you were at the start. And this is the main thing for you, Jeff, you know, just keep moving it nearer and nearer to what you would accept as being my you know, yeah. um, functional sort of um, position, sort of way of loading things. So here there's just like no real discipline with the way you're loading it. And you can actually see a difference in the way your body works when you do that as well. So because you're, if I said to you, you can take it back to the top of your back swing, or was the top of my back, I just, as far back as you want. You'll use mechanisms to do that, right? So most, most beginners will just sort of stand there, do very little with the body, just swing the arms at it. And then deck players will start introducing the body, but they'll also just try and sort of move away with their arms at it. And when, it, when players have long arm swings, you tend to find the pivot's not as good as it needs to. So what you're going to start doing now is using your body slightly differently to get the club to the top of the backswing. And what we see in this comparison here now which I'll, which I'll send these across to you. <coughs> what you start to see is a much more extension of the spine, much more extension of the neck. Pelvis is starting to get involved a little bit more. Yeah, yeah it, it was pretty good before, but it's just starting to just tidy up a little bit more. Yeah. See, when you do it in the pre-shot, they balance that sort of. So again, when you look at those images, what you're seeing is slightly better use of the body, but very much more discipline with the low and the lean. The right arm and the wrist, and then obviously the left arm, your left arm travels too far because the right arm is continuously rolling. So it's just anything you see on there could be a feel. You know, keeping the club to the side would be more. Um, you get the idea with the wall as well. The yellow yeah, wall definitely. coming up from here, like you've got to whack that very early. You, know, you didn't realise I was that far back. Whereas this guy's never going to make contact with that wall. So it's just adding it's that to sort of almost what feel of like you were. 50 yards away from green, you yes. just <laughs> yeah, yeah. mentally yeah, from where that club is to feeling there yeah. is, is where it is. is I mean, you think we use, um, obviously we use the P system, obviously it's yeah. like P1 set up, P2 shaft parallel, P3 left arm parallel, P4 top of the back swing. Now P4 is the only um, like vague area within that because it's like the top of the back swing varies from club to club. Yeah. So if the others are definitive positions, you almost need to feel like you're a P3 and then you're done. Yeah. So you, you've got to like almost like recalibrate your feels on this. Because you're, you're just used to, you know, your pivot has improved without a shadow of a doubt based on what you've been looking at over the past 10 years or so anyway. Um, so you, know, you don't keep the trail like flex, you don't restrict the hip rotation, which is great. But the way you use your levers is, is maybe very similar to players who do keep the right knee flex too long, you do restrict your pelvis because they've not the mechanism of getting the okay. to the top. So we need to sort of recalibrate the feels a little bit. So we're hitting these down now. Feel like you're going to swing to P3. So that's left arm parallel with the ground in the back swing. This would be your feel needle. So show me a few shots where you just go to that position. And then hit. That would have felt very, very different in your downswing, would you imagine? Yeah. Yeah, look at your backswing on this one. So you felt like you were P3 and hit. That was the feel, yeah? So you feeling that? Yeah. Yeah. Really good, that. You do. <coughs> didn't get anywhere near four wheel yeah. in that downswing. 
And you know, subconsciously they're yeah. feeling, it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It was almost like, right, and then I've got to go back the other yeah. way rather than just. Right, so whilst you're working on this, let's talk about your weight location, right? So you mentioned about not getting far enough forward with your down so. Um, you've got options there. So your weight location is like a variable you can use. So you can have 50 50, staying 50 50, moving into 90 10 if you wanted to. Yeah. You could have 60 40, staying 60 40, moving into 90 10. Or you could have 70 20, 70 30, 80 20. You could even if you were really trying to max things out, you know, really getting it. If you've got a beginner who's no concept of, of what low point control is about where they should be hitting the ground, just 90 10 at setup and just chip these balls forward. There's a better player who's working on things in his swing. If you had your weight 70 30 at setup and it stayed 70 30, that would enable you to think about your downswing a little bit less and having to move forward. Now again, 70 30 is more of a feel. Yeah, I look at your setup and it's sort of just maybe like 52 48. It's forward, but it's not, yeah, it's not far enough forward. forward yeah. Yeah. So I would say these next few, go 70 30 as a feel. Keep it 70 30. Thing to appreciate is that weight location is not constant. Good. From a club face standpoint, no, you know, what you can do, because the hands aren't getting, or the handle's not raising as much, or the handle's not going out for as long, you can afford to make your club face as passive as you want that. Yeah. You're not going to block it. All right, so these next few, keep that club face as passive as you can. Feel like you can go at that a bit harder now as well. Yeah. Without the fear of it going left. Yeah, it feels uh, it's not going to go right, but it doesn't feel like I'm going to lose it as much left if it yeah. does go. Good. P3, very little longer than the rest. Beautiful back swing on that one. Just goes with the fraction to yeah. send the equity out. So same feels. Again, position is all set. Not letting it all trust you anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
Has he ever thought put the camera there? I always put it over on that side and it's like yeah. there's dangerous though, isn't it? Same again. No longer in the wrist. Good squeeze on the way through. Yes. Forgive him for leaving the club face open on that one to the floor. Okay, same yeah. again from Jeff. Sounds close. You know where this, by the way. I've got this on your stance line, so yeah. you know where it is with that. You'd have to close that thing down a good 15, 20 degrees later. Same again, good squeeze. P3 and you're done, yeah? Yeah, at the end of the day, we can rotate the shaft at any point to swing out of it, but the main thing is to get it to a point where if you do close the full face down, it's not, yeah, it's not as excessive. Um, so the higher the handle, any feel that you've got will exaggerate the full face's closure. So if you get the same feel on two shots, one where the handle's higher than the other, it's going to be a greater amount of closure on the, on the higher handle. And on the lower. It's even there when I look back there. Still I'm trying to feel that. So the arm's hanging in more on the right hand side. Yeah. So you start to trace the arm, which is why the exit becomes a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. and the one on the right, you sort of pushed out a little bit. Yeah. You can see the arms are on a torso for longer, both sides of the ball, so we need to, we need to develop that. Um, these next few jets, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add one more thing. Right? I'll, I'll talk you through why we're doing it here once you've done a few. Right. Okay, so. <coughs> I want you to hit these shots there. Now, same feel, it's not change anything with the back swing. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel like you're going to P3 mm -hmm. with very little loading of the wrist. Mm -hmm. Now, that feel will change, so in a week or two's time, if you've been practicing this, you might not feel exactly the same as you did before. So, you need to be going constantly on video, not constantly on video, but when you, when you get a chance to film it, check certain alignments. Okay? So, you know that the right arm's going to load to 90 degrees, you know that the wrist should load to about 90 degrees. Down the line, on your better swings, you can see that the trail shoulder remains visible. Whereas when the arms lift and the wrist hinge too long, that, that trail shoulder, sorry, not the shoulder, trail shoulder uh, disappears. So what I want you to do now is, as you hit this, stop quick. You feel like you're going to stop at about chest height. You still hit the ball hard for me. So more of a... Yeah. So I feel like you, your arms and the club are going to stop at about maybe sternum height, yeah. There you go. Okay, so there we go. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Now this is going to be a, a completely um, it's going to be a very unusual feel for you if you've never done it before. And the sequence required from you to achieve it is very different to what you're used to. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, a bit of, around with it a little bit, but not from sort of. That Such a short bit, back swing yeah. position, yeah. yeah. Feels now on this, the left arm parallel, very little load in the wrist, and then stop and quick. Okay. So you show me that. Nice. 
rest of the building. So we'll look at that up again. Feel the right side bend in there. Yeah, yeah. Feel yeah. the right stretching not yeah, 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 you've got it on. Back swing thoughts now. Squeeze the head cover, that's your fifth pressure point. Yeah. That's going to prevent and discourage the arms from lifting. So the arms are top and so so that drops out. Yeah. Meanwhile, what we're going to do is we're going to control the amount that we roll the wrists and that the amount the left arm travels. Now, left arm travel, right arm rolling, directly linked. Loads of people out there trying to keep the left arm straight, but all the bend the right. So as soon as you over bend your right, left arm bends, isn't it? Instead of focusing on trying to straighten the left arm, why don't you try and control how much you bend or roll your right arm? So on the way back, your fields here are P3, left arm parallel, yeah. very little wrist hinge, and then from there, stop quick. Yeah. I mean, if you look at that as a general sort of move and feel, if you were doing that as a drill, that's showing me that you've got, for someone who generally would overload their levers, you've got a really good pivot with a limited amount and, and really in, inadequate amount of lead and rolling. So you're, up, you're practicing on the opposite side of the spectrum, which is perfect, because yeah. we know you can hold your levers and they get a little bit out of hand. So on the way through, when you stop quick, you see that the exit lowers, yeah. and there's very, very little closure on the club face. And as you come through that ball, you can see how the ball the hands went. Yeah. So you didn't get the hands flung off the rib cage and away from you excessively. So at speed, the feel here now, same feel, left arm parallel, no loading of the wrist. Gives you a beautiful position at the top. Nice and deep, but that nice flat, if not slightly bowling wrist, yeah. to live with that. Good position at five. And the goal now is to stop quick. So for you to stop quick, the arms have to stay on the torso. For the arms to stay on the torso, the body must function properly. So you've got to push up out the ground, pelvis has got to come out this forward bend. You've got to keep rotating and sliding, not just rotating, yeah. right? So you've got to rotate and side bend through the hip. You see how the hand pack gets control. Yeah. And then the exit much more as you would want it. Very little closure on the full face. Arms are tracing the sort of, uh, tracing the arc, both sides of the ball. So if you look at where you were at P5, your, like, your shaft is going through sort of mid bicep ish. Yeah. And then when you come through and you exit, you're on your mid bicep again. So that means you're tracing that arc, both sides of the ball. You're not getting flung off the arc accessible. So anybody who's pushing it, hooking it, you, you, your bad shot would be an overdraw stroke hook. Mine would always be a block when I do that. It depends on what you do with your club face as you're coming through. Really good that. Really tight. More the same, please. Clear on that, you know yep. how it all sort of fits in, yeah? Yeah, you can just feel like you can feel like you're just hitting your balls out mm -hmm. to the right, establishing that outer edge of your shot. Yeah. And then you can fit you can start adding some left curve to it as you go. But primarily you just don't want to see that left curve on there at all. Yeah. Really good. Probably, I would say, speed-wise, that one was down a little bit because yeah. you're trying to get your moves in. Yeah. Uh, from an alignment standpoint, that's probably the best one you've made up to. Yeah.
تو اسم حرف میکرد Doing here, I mean, they are both sides of the ball. Your main mechanism was always using your arms. That's been taken away from you. So you've got to figure out, your body's got to figure out how the hell you're going to get this done without the use of being able to sort of wail away with your levers and throw the club at it. Like so you're going to start, yeah, yeah it's like you're going to do that. So, so <laughs> your body and your mind are going to work together because yeah. at each stage, I'm not asking you to sort of hit it shorter or hit it slower, I'm actually now asking you to actually try and feel like you're going to go at it harder. Ultimately going forward, you want an action that you can go at as hard as you like without the fear of blowing it off the planet. That's where you're going towards, isn't it? So that when you do want to step on a little bit and you get the longer clubs out, um, and on that note, it doesn't really want to move on to driver now, we can. The moves that you're making are no different than driver. Weight location, what you're doing with your levers, what you're doing on your exit, it's just because it's a bigger club with a faster swing speed, you've got to offset certain things and work a little bit harder in certain facets of it, particularly the through swing. You find the stopping quick becomes a little bit more of a challenging driver. So the same rules apply, don't change anything. Do you want to grab your driver in it for you? Yeah. I think you should, yeah. <coughs> Sense your anticipation as you pull the driver out of your bag. Either that fear is one or the other. Yeah. Well, this is the one, isn't it? This is yeah, the one yeah, where that, it just there. goes off the, for everyone, yeah. it goes off the charts, doesn't it? Magnifies everything. The balls are making itself come back like that. Yeah. Carry on with it, I'm just going to get a few stills on there. Yeah. Doing this, just sort of again, pay attention to a few. I'm going to go on the left. Yeah. Okay. I think once it, once driving comes out as well, it's not so much the the less. I'm just as easy to push it 20 yards right as well because I'm yeah. avoiding well, that rotation. Like, yeah. So, so when you're looking at, at the changes you've made so far, you're not just relate it to loading the levers on the way back, which is that's an important part of it. But what we're also seeing is an impact, we're not as much like this, yeah. we're much more like this. So the hand path isn't going this way. So if you wanted a, um, the recipe for hitting it the furthest right or furthest left possible, depending on what you do with the club face, you would have, first thing you would do is you would say, right, massive move off, big linear movement, pull away as quick as you can, get the handle as high as you can, and then from there the hand patch just projected out to the right. So if you keep the club face passive, it's a big block. The minute you even look at balls in that club face, just exaggerate. So if your wrists are hinged and you rotate the club around your lead arm, not that you can hit a ball like that, but there's very, very little movement or rotation of that club face. As the wrists uncock, that same feel closes the club face down more. If the wrist of the most on cops, the club's just spinning around its own axis and it's just left and right for fun, isn't it?
if we can get it down to a minimum amount is the key, isn't it? It's, yeah. you always, everyone hits bad shots, but it's, it's, it's organizing fewer it. and the ones that you do hit are less damaging. It's organising it, it's being able to, you know, as a golfer, you see, it, you hit a shot, you see the ball do something, and then you react to it, and, and you react to it generally by making a change. The important thing is to change the appropriate part of the swing that broke down, not go searching and maybe changing something that didn't need fixing. For instance, your um, your initial comments were, were very much related to, to like your pivot, so like your inner, inner part of your swing, um, about like rotating through it, etc., etc. Maybe not being forward enough. But actually, a lot of the issues on the outer edge of your swing was the levers, wasn't it? What you, can, you know, the club head. You can't really monitor what the club head's doing because you, know, you can't feel what the club head's doing. We can feel what the hands are doing. We can feel what the arms are doing, and we can certainly control what the body's doing. So really, you're just like calming that outer edge down. Um, and a lot of the bad shots we get in golf are, are based on anticipation. You lie in bed all night worried about going out of bounds left. Oh, I hate that hole, I don't want to go out of bounds left. You have to see, you lose your ball in the woods on the right. You, you tend not to go. <coughs> you you, yeah, you, you're anticipating it. So a lot of time, if you're worried about blocking it, yeah. you may hook it. If you're worried about hooking it, you may block it. Your alignment's are the same, you're stuck under it for whatever reason, and your club face is, is closing down too fast. Or if it stays passive, it's staying passive to a path that's too far out to the right. And that's your recipe for block, hook. Depending on like, I would block it, you would hook it. Or depending on what scenario you're in a lot of it, isn't it? Yeah. And it is that, again, it's that sort of, a lot of the times that the, <coughs> sort of, you want thing in the body will reorganise itself a little yeah, bit yeah. as well. Everything sort yeah. of, you don't have to think about too much because no. it all, the knock on effect of, as if for me, controlling the levers is, Bodies control the golf swing anyway. is massive. Yeah. You're not careful, golf swing, especially if you start going on on social media and YouTube. It's like there's so much information out there. Um, some contradictory, some some not so much contradictory. But you know, just, everyone's got a different opinion. The problem you've got is if you go on there and you don't know what you're looking at, you could be working on something that, whilst it's relevant to player A or play a beat, that's absolutely no relevance to what you're doing. It could be the worst thing you could possibly do. So it's that organisation, if you do this, you will get that, and you, if you change that, this will change. And once you understand that, then you can start working on your game correctly, you can start analysing your shots correctly, so you're at the golf course, you hit a certain shots, it's inevitable at some point. Okay, that's gone that way, I felt this, those two things match up, but when we go get to the range, and have to construe the practice. Good, feels tight, yeah. it feels connected yeah. together Good. and somewhat easier. Feels like you know, I know I'm not working anywhere near as hard to yeah. try and sort of coordinate the bottom.
like most of these Yes. Yeah. don't want to start doing it. You, you, you need to appreciate the difference between those two moves. You kept the cover on both of those swings. Yeah. Neither of those balls went left. You see where the yeah. start connection. But you have a different appearance at that point. Okay, so as you're hitting your driver, there's more force pulling that club around that way because the shaft sits on a flat rangle generate more speed. So if you try to make your exit with the driver look the way it looks from six second, you set yourself up for failure on that one. Um, so, so both those swings, you're tracing the arc in an appropriate manner. If you weren't the head cover of the front the yeah. arc. But we do have a different appearance. Yeah. The hand, hand path looks completely different. Yes, so the hand path will and should look a little bit more out to the right with your driver. Yeah. Um, than it would be drying because that corner down at the bottom, the, le the less loft you have, if you go the longer the club, the harder the swing, the flatter the line angle, the more force is pulling you out. <coughs> it's almost dry, like driving a mini and an HGV. The HGV has yeah, got a bigger turn yeah, angle, precisely. bigger turning yeah. circle. Yeah. 100%. So just bear that in mind. <clears throat> just think, you know, when you're filming it, you don't necessarily, you don't need to look the same, don't think yeah. you're doing it incorrectly, you know. Left arm parallel with the ground, very little pinching of the wrist. You set the heel a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, let's finish off with a good one. Same feels though, yeah? Uh, but when you play it, you can actually yeah. tuck the shirt yeah. in your sleeve. Yeah? yeah. You can tuck the yeah. shirt under your arm. Keep the near is P3. Very little volume, that's it. No hook. No hook. It's good, that. Brilliant. Cheers, Arnold. Thanks, thanks for that, mate. Much appreciated. Guys, thanks for watching. This is the first episode. And Dan's going to help me with this project um, for a while. So, anybody who wants to get in touch with him, anyone who's got any questions for him, post his socials down there so you can contact him directly. Don't forget, he's on Instagram. Loads of great stuff on there as well. Guys, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in my first practice session next week.